Sugar Cubes used to play the um, Carries and Bactus tune and it used to be our intro song. Da, 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 In Iceland, we had the Atarektor, who was obsessed with Torben Egner. So, since the 60s, every two years, uh, one of uh, Torben Egner's plays is set up in the National Theatre of Iceland. And so, every generation of kids is able to see both the, I uh, don't know what you call it in, in Norwegian, Kardamombyrin. Yeah, Kardamombyrin. And Dyrni Halsoskoi. Dyrni Hockeybokeskoi. And Karis and Baktus. It's the most happening um, theatre event in Iceland. And it's like they've been trying to do all sort of things like putting Andrew Lloyd Webber's place up and all sort of sort of all over the world successes up in Iceland. Mm. But always the hits of every year for the last sort of 30 years has always been Torpin Eckner's things. What people seem to misunderstand mostly about shoe keeps is they uh, is they think it's about music, but that's like a complete misunderstanding. It wasn't at all. That was just the surface. We got together several people, especially most of us poets or people who are into literature, that being quite important in Iceland, and formed a company called Smaklesa, which means bad taste. And um, all did normal jobs just to, to, in order to survive. And then we got together in the evenings and would either, either work on a book or borrow our parents' car and distribute it, make the poster or do a record or help someone do a film. You know, I would be a sound person one day, next day I would be a cook. And we decided that to form this really silly band to play in our parties. And so two poets would get like a guitar and bass and, and I would like sing. Um, we call it the stupidest name we could think of, Sugar Cubes. It sounded a bit like the Monkees or Appa or, or, or something like that. And just wrote these really silly pop songs. English journalist, England being completely bored with itself and nothing exciting happening. They kind of accidentally got this Icelandic copy of Seven Inch and made it into Single of the Week, a melody maker. And, and all the papers in England started writing about us that we were this elf and Eskimos for outer space or something. And we didn't even know about it. And all these record companies would come over and try to make a deal with us. Mm. And um, we were like, fuck you, you know. You're the people who made Elvis take all the drugs, aren't you? We don't want you. We got our own world here, we're happy. And we want to just continue this label. But then after they've been, that was 87, but after they've been going on about this for another year, it's like, listen, do you want to go for two months to America? I mean, most of us have never been there, right? Uh, you get free air tickets, you get free hotels, free food, free drinks. You, you can take some of your friends with you and all you have to do is pretend you're a rock band. <laughs> and it's like, sound like a great deal, you know? The good thing about shoe cubes is we got a lot of money. So we, we could put out um, to, um, to bad taste and put out more, to more expensive books and more expensive films. So it was a bit, in a way of funding our dreams. Even though we're very isolated in Iceland and very proud of our culture and, and have had to sort of survive for a thousand years on our own kind of thing and definitely got our ident identity sorted out. We're still obsessed with um, communication and information so we're usually pretty sort of cool on what's going on in the world and sort of you know but still kind of like stick to our Icelandic. We uh, are proud to, to say that we, are, we were the first rappers of, of Europe. 
because the way we would memorize all the sagas and all the literature was by chanting it and which is kind of like half singing half talking and that's the way we could sort of memorize whole book and keep it from going from generation to generation to generation until it was written down I was always singing and um, it was like this festival and so this guy came up to me wanted to make like 900 million like kroners or whatever and wanted to make a child star so I did this one record when I was 11 and then they wanted me to do another one because it, it, it went really well and I didn't want to because it meant I would have to work with grown-ups and grown-ups they were kind of like past their climax I wanted to experiment and make songs about what I was feeling like with people that were my age. So I just uh, sat, told them to fuck off and went to my school and, and joined up with several kids um, my age and formed bands and I've basically been in bands ever since. experimenting a lot in Iceland. You kind of came from the punk. It didn't matter if, if, even though you couldn't play your guitar really fast and well. And you couldn't sing as long as you wanted to do it, it was all right. So a lot of people felt the freedom and just went for it and formed all sort of different bands. It wasn't really punk, it was kind of like energy thing, and it really positive energy thing. Always when I read about you, it's always something Icelandic connected to you. Uh, do you do that on purpose? No, not at all. Most of it is out of my control. It's um, it's basically um, it's called English racism, if you want. It's um, English caught with this illusion that English is the best place in the universe, and and England is England, and rest is some sort of sort of creatures that happen to live on the planet as well they're like giraffes and you've got giraffes and you've got monkeys and you've got uh, whales and you've got um, French people and you've got Icelandic creatures and it's about this sort of exotism that uh, English people have got is they want to like they don't they can't deal with it that you're actually a human being that sort of eats fucks and sleeps and laughs and cries and all those things you're just this kind of creature that kind of like floats over the northern North Pole and sort of like speak in an elfin kind of way and that's the only way that can make you interesting. You left Iceland now? Yeah. I had to swallow my pride when I moved to London. What I figured out before I would drop dead to once do a record of my own. And I realized after being with Sugar Cubes that uh, all the freedom that comes with doing album abroad because you get money and you get musicians and you get all sort of luxury items. If I would have done this record in Iceland, I, to be able to do it the way I wanted, I would probably have to like um, work in a fish factory along it um, to, to be able to fi finance it. And I would have to probably I wouldn't be able to find the sound people or the musicians I liked, so I probably would have done it all myself. Which means it would probably have been pretty sort of clumsy and naive. So this is the first time you actually go out and do something musical uh, that you have planned and uh, want to do. Yeah, that's why I call my album Baby. Hmm. Because it's the first time it's kind of like conscious effort of doing my own music. And also I want to stress the point to foreigners who don't know anything about Iceland or things that happen there, that I'm not really a singer. I, what I do is, is I make music and I kind of happen to sing on it. The 
it's very important for you to uh, keep control of your own stuff and uh, yeah, of course. Way. It's not so much that I'm a control freak. Um, I, I have actually no interest of controlling the world, you know, or sort of standing on the top of a mountain and sort of, you know, I'm great or something like this. But when it comes to your own music, it's a bit like having children. You you became you become very protective and and like with your own kids it's really important what education they're going to get what surroundings they're going to get pollution what food if they're going to get nutrition if they're going to get education um, doctors all those things and the same is with with uh, if your kids are going to turn out on the other end as still being human and kids the same with songs if if I can protect my songs and make sense that nobody pollutions them or make them horrible and they can still come out the other end as, as sort of sort of healthy songs I'm happy and that's why I, I fight Be right. 